Hey guys! Due to a certain recent, possibly ill-advised video, uh, I received a suggestion to do a makeup tutorial for Captain Jack Harkness from Doctor Who and Torchwood. So since I am making several appearances as Captain Jack this month at various events, I figured now is as good a time as any. Okay, I've relocated to a room with a mirror so I can see what I'm doing. You get to sit over here and watch. Uh, I have my reference image for the character I'm going to be doing makeup design for, which is Captain Jack Harkness as played by John Barrowman. Now while I was away from the camera, I did remove the makeup I was already wearing and moisturize. So I should be all ready to go. Moisturizer and primer should always go on before your foundation coat. Now since Jack is a man in his mid to late 30s, I don't need a flawless airbrush finish like I would if I were trying to do some sort of really fancy glamour makeup. Um, so instead of using a heavier foundation, I'm just going to use a BB cream, which is a very light coverage, and I will put that all over my face. Very light coat. The key with any foundation is to blend and make sure you're getting an even amount everywhere, especially along your jawline and under your chin. Those are areas that are often forgotten when you're putting on foundation, and you don't want to end up with a hard line right here where you're not putting on a complete coat of makeup. This should blend evenly all over your face. Just a little tiny bit will do for most makeup. In addition to evening out your skin tone, this will help the next layer of makeup stick to your skin, just as a primer would. Okay, so I've finished putting the foundation layer on my face. Next, I want to do a little bit of contouring and shadowing. Now, normally, if I were doing a glamour makeup design, I would want to highlight my cheekbones and shadow underneath them, change the shape of my face. However, my face is already a lot narrower than John Barrowman's, so I don't want to make anything more angular than it already is. So what I'm going to do is use this very uh, grayish, cool tone blush and an angled contouring brush. And I'm actually going to give myself a little bit of a masculine jawline here, just by shading underneath. You don't want to do this too heavy because you don't want to end up with a giant stripe under your jaw, but adding the shadow can make it stand out a little bit. And one of the things that makes men look more manly is having a strong jawline, so I'm cheating. Okay, so a little bit of shadow there, nothing too dramatic. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of concealer under my eyes because I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. And while I don't need to worry about looking too perfect and glamorous and model-like, I still want to look awake. Now perhaps the most notable feature of John Barrowman's facial structure is his cleft chin. I don't have one. He does. So I'm actually going to draw one on. We call this cheating again. So I'm starting with just a neutral gray eyeliner, putting a line in the center of my chin. It's not going to stay that strong because I'm going to blend that out with my finger down under the chin so I don't have a hard line where it stops. And then I'm going to use a little bit of a sort of tan eyeshadow, just a very light bit, and do some shading on either side of it and blend that. And I'm going to use a little bit of a lighter eyeshadow on either side to make that stand out a bit more. So I'm creating an artificial contour to give myself the look of having a cleft chin without actually having one. And again, after I powder over that, at the end it'll be a little smoother and blend into the rest of the face. Now for the eyes. I want to do some shading so my eyes actually show up in photos because after I put foundation everywhere, if a camera flash hits my face, it'll just kind of wash out all the skin. So I don't want to do a very girly eyeshadow design. What I'm going to do is use a very neutral eyeshadow color and just do some shading under my brow bone, just a little bit. This just helps to give my eyes a little bit more definition in pictures. It doesn't have to be too strong. You actually don't want it too strong or I won't look like I'm cross playing. Okay, so I have a little bit of a shadow on each side there. Now I have naturally very high arched eyebrows. I need them to look a little less girly. So I'm going to use a plain eyebrow pencil, just sort of a medium grayish brown, it's about the same color as the hair. And I'm going to fill in so that I have very thick, heavy eyebrows compared to what I have now. There are a lot of ways to modify your eyebrows. You can draw on individual hairs. You can change the shape quite a bit. Uh, with this, I'm mostly just looking for a contour, so I don't need to be... I'm not doing high-definition photography. I don't need the individual hairs to be there. I'm just going to fill in the shape and darken it a bit.
So there's one. And there's the other. Now one other element that you may want to add is if the actor you're attempting to portray is older than you or considerably younger than you, you may have different lines in your skin, you may have wrinkles, you may have different elements of your appearance that you can either accentuate or cover up. Um, there are lots of wrinkle filling creams and makeups if you're trying to play someone younger and you have lines and they don't. Uh, in this case, these not really wrinkles, but definitely some little frown lines going on between the brows there, so I'm going to add those to my face as well. The easiest way to do this is just scrunch up your face, put a little, very faint mark in the center of the wrinkle, and then fill in with contouring powder. We want these to be very subtle. I don't want it to be something people notice. I want it to be almost on a subconscious level, so it's there in the expressions if I'm making certain expressions, but it's not something that looks like I've drawn lines on my face. So I'm just using my pencil, putting very faint, faint lines, and again I'm going to powder over these so they're not very visible when I'm done. He has a little bit of smile lines too. I'm going to add just a hint of those. Okay, so you can't really see them in detail, but when I make certain facial expressions, those shadows are going to show up more. Now I'm going to powder over the whole thing, and I'm almost out of powder, I just discovered. Generally speaking, a loose powder is best if you're setting any sort of cream makeup. Um, I'm sort of having to grind this one up because it's actually a pressed powder. But it's always a good idea to put a powder finish on any makeup design you do so it helps diffuse the light. If you are out in bright sunlight or if you are being hit in the face with a camera flash, you don't want hot spots or shiny things showing up on your face. Okay. Next, I'm going to put on just a tiny bit of mascara so my eyelashes show up a little bit better. I'm using a brown mascara. I don't ever use black mascara when I'm doing a male character. So I'm just putting a tiny, tiny bit on the tips so my eyelashes show up because I have pretty pathetic eyelashes. This also helps add some eye definition in photos. And one last thing, I have big red girly lips that I need to get rid of. So I'm going to use this flesh tone lipstick. This is a Makeup Forever. I have no idea what color because it's completely worn off on the bottom. Um, but it is a flesh tone that's very close to my skin color. I'm going to put a very light coat of this on. And I'm going to fill in just around the edges so my lips aren't so full. And then I'm going to powder over that to help set it. So my lips aren't quite so bold as they were before. And then of course, I have this to deal with, so uh, I will pause just for a second while I put my hair up. And with the addition of a wig to hide the three feet of green hair, I now look a little bit more like Captain Jack Harkness. And who are you? That's it for today then. Thanks for tuning in. As usual, if you have any questions, you know where to find us. Probably somewhere playing with our toys. Say goodbye, Jack.